So you, I uh, I took a half a day tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I still have like fifty six hours of vacation that I have to take before the end of the year. I got something similar, not fifty six, but I think I have like I can take two days off and get a week off. Right. Right. So right. I think I with floating holidays and the stuff that I got screwed over with when I was in South Carolina, I think I got at least four or five more days I need to take off. Yeah. Yeah, fifty six hours equivalents to. It's basically, let's see, five, six days plus my birthday. That was a cool thing that I liked about uh, BF Goodrich as wage. Mm -hmm. You automatically get your birthday off paid. See, we get our birthday off paid, but you don't have to take it. What is you, going on here? I don't know. I feel like you tapped a uh, <laughs> the other. You want to do it? <laughs> no. Why? Uh, okay, yeah, maybe not for your segment. I mean, we can, but I don't, I mean, I'd want to control it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hold on. What's this? Oh, find a face. Uh, yeah, is it a mask thing? I think it is. Let's see. Find my, what? Oh! 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 oh man. Hold on, Jordan <laughs> Pugh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just not. We'll just we'll just keep the party rolling. It's pretty interesting, though. Yeah, I mean, man. I got you over here. So, as far as YouTube goes, Marlon's over here on Facebook, messing around with some of the filters <sighs> uh, for recording. Uh, just say record video, and it should probably. Oh, wait. What? Oh, go. Yeah. Stop go. it. Here we go. <sighs> so Marlon's over here. <sighs> Uh, messing around with some of the filters. features and filters that go along with going Facebook Live. And uh, <clears throat> for a second, he was Jordan Peele. And then for another minute, uh, <laughs> he <laughs> he had like bubbles going across his face. Which oh, was, it was weird. Like, damn interesting. So That would have been like the whole segment. It would have been like, where are they at? Right, right. Or, <laughs> or like the like uh, Dumbo. I didn't watch Dumbo. So, You've never ever seen Dumbo, even the animated one. Honestly, with the the pink elephants, I probably did when I was a kid. I don't remember that. Oh, dude, or purple elephants? Pink elephants. See, you don't even elephants, know. nonetheless. He, he basically got. Well, in the newer one, he wasn't drunk. Uh, it was basically like an illusion with bubbles, but it was it reminded me of like bubbles going across the anime. <laughs> so we could have done something really cool there, man. You kind of ruined it as far as uh. There's always another goes. opportunity. You're not wrong. Bring us in. Um, three Crafty Bastards, we're back for another segment. And I am Mr. Classic, and I'm with... Uh, John Stewart, Green Lantern. Nice. Getting nice. tricky. Nice. Um, this is going to be one of our... I don't know, my, if, I, if I'm leading this segment, I got a bunch of different stuff, because there's a bunch of different stuff happening today. Yeah, let's, let's try to tackle it. I feel like anything that kind of overlaps... If it overlaps too much, we're just going to make this one segment, and that's going to be our recording. Cool. Okay. Cool. So, first and foremost, <clears throat> I don't know if I want to bring in a somber note or not, because you had the our 366 mass shooting this morning. I've seen it, and actually I do have... In Southern California, so prayers out to the victims on that Southern California at Saugus High School... Uh, two dead, three wounded. The, here's the spinner, the kicker for me. The the shooter, 16-year-old uh, gunman, uh, tried to turn a gun on himself, and it didn't work. He survived. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, it's <laughs> funny because I, I read probably three articles on lunch uh, because I wanted to talk about it at least a little bit. Right. Because we had such a – if you go back, actually, I'm going to pull it up. But if you go back to some of the stuff that we've done, mm -hmm. uh, we have an episode on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shamelessly promote us mm -hmm. right now uh, as soon as it comes up. I remember that. Yeah. We have an episode on YouTube. If we go to the Three Crafty Bastards YouTube channel and then we look at all of our videos. Check this out, dude. How impressive is that? A one, yeah, dude, that is pretty dope. 
But if you go to an episode that we have called Talk About a Plot Twist, I feel like it kind of covers what uh, what we were talking about as far as mental health issues, gun control issues, shooting, uh, like mass shooting or unnecessary shooting mm-hmm. issues. Because I can almost guarantee this kid didn't want to do what he did. But he did it and felt like he had to follow through. And then when he wanted to end it all, he probably didn't want to kill himself. And he probably just, I don't know where, he, I don't, they didn't say where he shot himself. He likely shot himself probably through his face or something, I bet, right. without seeing it. Or well, did so, he actually shoot himself or did the gun jam? He shot himself. Which and is why. They say he survived it. That must be why they said that the the suspect was safely apprehended as opposed to the yeah. hood. Yeah, so. Uh, the other the other shameful fact, man, is 366 this year. In 2019, that's number 366 mass shooting in, the, in, in America. That's more than one a day currently. It's going to be more than one a day for the year. And we're yeah. not even done with the year. Right. So that, that that's that's very shameful for our country. And, and I just left a note for myself that I, I do hope that our next uh, leadership does something to... To do something about that. Well, yes. yes. There's got to be something. 100%. There's got to be something done. Because I also have something else where our next leadership needs to do something, too. Let's, let's talk about it. <clears throat> um, I have the Fort Wayne Tin Caps. Okay. Are going to rename themselves Manzanas Luchadores for six games. It's, a, it's an initiative... Uh, with the minor league baseball program to engage, it says Hispanic Fan Reengagement Initiative is what it's called. Okay. <clears throat> I got this off of uh, Wayne TV and I think another TV station, local TV station, covered it. And if you read the notes below on the uh, on the on the on on the original post, several people are disgusted. With us reaching out to the Hispanic community to say, hey, uh, it's a program called Es Divertido Ser Un Fan. Okay. It's fun to be a fan. Right. So they're reaching out to Hispanics, <clears throat> the Hispanic community here in Fort Wayne, to come out and see the, the Fort Wayne Tin Caps. Right. And uh, there's a new logo of an apple with a luchador mask. The, the the Spanish freestyle wrestlers. Dude, that'd be dope. <clears throat> I, I sort of have that. The logo is online. Really? It is dope. I love it. The uh the paraphernalia is on sale already at the at the at Parkview Field. Right. The dates are gonna be May first through third, June twenty sixth through the twenty eighth of next year. So I'm excited to go see it. But again, <clears throat> the 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 comments from the local people were uh probably disheartening at best, right? It was it was it was I don't know, man. It was I was disgusted. Do you have some of those comments? I didn't write them down. I, I didn't. I couldn't put pen to paper to write those things down. It was disgusting. Really? Yeah. They were like, if we're if we're trying to send them back, why are we trying to embrace them? You know, they were they were disgusting. I mean, there were comments that were like, you know, that's great that we're doing that because a lot of our a lot of our great baseball players today they're Hispanic. So what what be more fun than seeing some of your uh, Hispanic heroes playing baseball? Like we have Fernando Tatis Jr., who was a Rookie of the Year candidate this year, got be- got beat out by my team's Pete Alonso from the Mets. <clears throat> However, um, he's a great ball player. Played here in Fort Wayne. Uh, was a Rookie of the Year candidate. So uh, I've I've watched baseball long enough to see his dad play. His dad was a great home run hitter. So there's a I'd say there's a good portion of his. Oh, family. dude, are you serious? Tell me that's not dope. That's the logo. <laughs> Hold on. That's dope. Hold on. Check this out. So if you're listening to what he's talking about, as soon as you get in focus, here's the logo for our local baseball team. Manzanas Luchadores, and it literally literally translates the Check this out. Literally translates the Check fighting the fighting apples. There we go, right there. The fighting apples is what we're gonna be made. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Man. So I love the initiative. Anytime you can bring um uh, our youth together to play sports or come together. Any, not even the youth, just anybody. Well, because we, growing up, uh, there was a small 
portion of us African American young young men and some females because we had girls. I had a girl on my little baseball team who was black, and we've kind of just faded away from baseball. Right. Like we had you know, King Griffey Jr., Barry Larkin, uh, Barry Bonds, Devon White, Barry Bonds, Bobby Bonilla. We had all these guys. Right. And I look up to the bulk of them because they look like me and they played baseball. I love baseball. I saw the Pirates when Bobby Bonilla and Barry Bonds were on the same team. I went I went and saw them in Pittsburgh. That would have been awesome. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize it at the time, but yeah, it was. Yeah. And, you know, my favorite players on the Mets were Dwight Gooden and Daryl Strawberry. They were the reasons why I love baseball. Right. So we've gone away from African Americans in baseball. Like, I watched the Little League World Series. And we had that team from New York a few years ago. Unfortunately, they got busted for redistricting. So they were getting kids outside of their district for their baseball team to compete. And they were freaking awesome. Right. But <clears throat> that's like, were we, were we getting back? I mean, it was, it was virtually an all-black ba- Little League baseball team. They were, they, were, they were pretty awesome. But they were like, well, they had to cheat. They went, no. They were still talented young, young men. Right. Bottom line. And that's not their fault. The young men, not their fault uh, with their coaches or whoever did that. So uh, just reconnecting with with different uh, cultural groups to, to, to love the sport that I grew up loving, baseball. I mean, if we had if we had it for you know, a local German population or, you know, we have the Burmese, the Sikh, if we have if they love baseball, let's reach out to them and bring them into the sport, man. Right. So, <clears throat> that's why I look well, at it. Well, and it's it's not even sports related. Like, honestly, why do people have to be assholes? You know, trying to send them back for what you know. What I I think people don't think about is the the people that are trying to send them back. Uh. That. Everyone else is doing the jobs that these people feel like they're too good to do. Exactly. Our economy yeah. currently is robust for working. Right. So if you don't want to work for somebody else, find your niche and own your own business. But there's plenty of jobs out there for everyone to do. Yeah. That's why our, our employment is at all is, is at least close to a near all time low. And I don't know who you can say Trump or Obama, who I don't care. It doesn't matter who did it. It's just that the economy is there. So here's what I feel like you are like setting up a shit ton of segues. So, if I may, like, can we just make it one? Sure. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to interject <clears throat> on Mr. Classic's uh, segment tonight. And I'm going to have part of my segment be part of his segment. And we'll just do one okay. short show. We'll try. <laughs> we'll try. Uh, speaking of baseball. Baseball. Right? Yeah. So, I heard this morning uh, on the radio that the Houston Astros have been accused of cheating. Were you going to cover this? Nope. No. Okay. So the debate was because one source says, yeah, yeah, there was a camera out in center field that was picking up the the signs from the catcher. And then I believe they said the second baseman was alerting the, uh, no, 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 no. The second baseman, if they had someone on second, would be alerting the batter to what pitch was being thrown. Second baseman, the person... That maybe if there was an offensive person on second base, right, could alert the batter to the pitch to the pitch coming, right. Uh, and then there was another report that was saying that there was no electronic beeping, <clears throat> that it was just they were studying signs, and if there was a batter on or if there was a, a offensive person on base, they were alerting the batter to the pitch mm-hmm. that was being thrown. Mm-hmm. Do you have an opinion on this? I believe it happens all the time with every team. Because this is, I mean, because that's 2017 was the year that they won the World Series, right? Yeah, and that's where that's where Michael Fires is the is the pitcher who basically blew the whistle on on Houston. I don't know why, what motivated him to do that. Why he would, why, you got a ring and you're on another team right now. I think he's in Oakland. Right. What would possess you to do that? However, you know, baseball for me, the way the reason I love baseball is he is in Oakland. Yeah, it's okay. a game of chess with people. Right. So, like, when they're switching out pinch hitters and relief pitchers and, you know, shifting your defense and all, I mean, there's constant stuff going on. So, you have to think that there's someone who is studying the other team's signs in order to get an advantage. That's just part of the game. So, whether they're – if they're using 
technology with video cameras and whatnot, you know, that's like that's like taking that's like an athlete taking steroids. So which they have. I don't Marmore. I don't see the major There's every everyone everyone does it. Bear it's bonds. Just, nope. Not going with you on that one. You're not gonna go with you on that one. He's a home run leader? Nope. Never okay. been convicted, never been caught. Of needs course he's never been convicted. He needs to be in history books, just like Pete Rose needs to be in history books. Okay. That's a whole nother segment. But anyway, uh, I just think that, I just think you're trying to find an advantage. I mean, I mean, is that any different than the Patriots taking film? No. That's exactly what it is. Right. And what did they do? Win multiple Super Bowls. Hella Super Bowls. So, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm not surprised. And at this point, I don't care. Right, right. I don't care. It's not a big issue. Him blowing the whistle, he's a he's a stool pigeon. I would I would never want to play with him again. Do you think that's going to have an effect on his career in Oakland? No. Well, well they, unless Oakland's doing the same shit, stealing signs. Then he's like, well, he's going to blow the whistle when he's retires or goes from our team. Right. If that's the case, then that I can have like a. In, I feel like in Oakland, a little uh, sh- sh- Take care of that. Snitches? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right, man. Yeah, and he's in the wrong team ain't, for that, yeah, too. Yeah, you know, snitching in Oak Town, man. They take the athletics seriously. So I, I, I'm not surprised, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in shock and all. I'm, I'm more in shock about the stool pigeon aspect of it. Quite honestly, I wanted you to be in shock that I, pre- I presented a story about baseball. I actually am because that's usually the I one took that, interest in this. The one that kind of off the beaten path, like that's not like front page news, but that's off the beaten path. That's yeah, that's that's from local baseball to national baseball. That's good stuff. So one, I get points for the segue. Two, <laughs> I get points for presenting a baseball story. Period. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was interesting though because uh because of the different aspects of it because it wasn't just him that said. They did. No one came out. Okay, I guess he did come out right and say, "Yeah, we cheated." Why? Right. Why? But no one else said, "Yeah, we cheated." They said, "Here's what we were doing," and if it wasn't allowed in baseball, like it wasn't technology based, so why wouldn't it be allowed in baseball? Everyone's doing sign it. sign reading. Everyone's doing it. You know, like... as far as football goes, college is a little more, I would say, a little more difficult because you got 13 guys. Mm-hmm. On the sidelines, one guy's holding up cue cards, another guy's doing this, doing another guy's now. doing the the cupid shuffle, mm-hmm. and you're trying to decipher a play out of this. Hey, Justin, Justin what's up? I've seen him a while. Yeah, but you got like 13 guys on the sideline, and they're they're all doing different things, and the play caller knows who to look at. Yep. Right, for that series or that player, whatever, and uh, and so I would imagine you have. 13 guys on the other sideline saying, okay, when you see the eye in the Tupac on the cue card, this is what they're going to run. I saw Tupac on a cue card last weekend when I was watching college that's football. That's the play they ran. I don't know. what I I mean, they all represent, eyes on me. They represent they, plays. Yeah, certainly. So yeah, yeah. 100%. That's exactly you know? it. So I thought it was interesting that there's so many different signs. So how do you decipher it all? Well, that's it's repetition. So like I said, this, someone's studying, like even the third baseman, they're doing all this – all this mess means something. Right. So someone is looking at him like, okay, he did this, they're stealing. Right. He did this, it's hit and run. Everyone does it. Right. Michael Fires, shut up. You think he's upset about something? You think he he's feels but, like the Astros did him wrong? But hurt about something. I mean, he's 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 a great he threw a no hitter this year. Right. He's a good pitcher. So I don't know why he felt like he had to maybe he was drunk. Maybe he had some eight and a half percent do claw. I don't know. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how the story develops, though, because he's obviously upset about something, and I feel like in the in the end, it's all going to come out. Well, here's the other thing: if Houston can prove or disprove, send it. We will send you an address. Message one of us, and we will send you an address to send that to. If if Houston can prove he's wrong, they will counter counter suit him. They will they will put a lawsuit on him right. and sue him for defamation. Right. So that's what I'm waiting on. Well, and then there goes that Oakland money. Well, he or, can prove or Houston money. Somebody's losing money on the deal. Yeah. So yeah. if if a whole organization is taking a player to court, then I think the organization might win. I think the organization has lawyers that guarantee that they win. 
basically. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, sorry, man. I just wanted to throw that out there, man. That was one of that was one of the stories that I had written down for uh, for this evening. You know, that's cool. Um, this is one small blurb. I just saw this right before I left. Anyone who's a fan of the group Kiss. <sighs> There are KISS fans, there are people that are that are a little bit older than us who are KISS fans. KISS will be back here February 21st at the Coliseum. Right. They just announced that today. So I was just going to put a blurb out there. Pre-sale tickets go on. Today is the 14th. So yeah. next Thursday, 10 a.m., tickets go on sale for KISS for those who are interested. I just want to throw that out there. I know I've got friends who would be interested. That's why, that's why I did it. Yes, though. Well, we all can't be. I mean, snobs. Whatever. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, Vinyl snobs. I have a couple movie things from Netflix. Yeah. Let's uh, do it. Netflix. Because I have something to correspond with that, actually. Okay. I've got like three different things. First and foremost, what, what drew me to this Netflix thing. Some people are not fans of Spongebob. Mm -hmm. I actually like Spongebob. I don't like his movie productions, but I do watch the shit out of the cartoons on Nickelodeon. Have you seen the Spongebob movie? I saw the first two. There's more than one? There's two, I think. Live action movie? There's two. No fucking way. There's two. They're coming out with three. They're coming out with... Let me go to the handy dandy <laughs> notebook. I'm feeling some trust issues. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Uh, you know what? I honestly, I just want the opportunity to rip this thing right off the keyboard and be like, boop, boop, boop. See? Justin likes Te kiss. Technology. Uh, See? Man, you know what? Here, let me let me finish. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So, there is a SpongeBob 3 coming out. I think that's coming out in theaters. Uh, there is a trailer that just dropped today for that. So, but Netflix and Nickelodeon have a multi-year $200 million deal to produce a bunch of different shows, but they're doing a spinoff featuring Squidward. I did not know that was a show that I wanted to watch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Squidward, Squidward comes off as a dick most of the time. He's, he's haughty, he's snooty, uh, very humdrum. I'm looking forward to Disney. It's going to be on Disney Plus. Oh, actually, not on Disney Plus. Sorry, it's on Netflix. It's likely motivated by the competition of Disney Plus. Okay, so SpongeBob Movie 2. Sponge Out of Water. Yep. Yeah, Antonio Banderas, and I've seen it. So, what was the first one? I don't know. Don't ask me. Oh, is this the damn one that with Keanu Reeves? No, that's for the third one. That's for the third one. Yeah. What was the first one? Don't ask me. It was a long time ago. I've I've seen Sponge <clears throat> Out of Water. I've seen Sponge Out of Water. I took I took uh one of my friend's kids to go see it, and SpongeBob didn't even get out of the water till like the last twenty minutes, and they were like the kid was pissed. So anyway, that one didn't go over very well. <clears throat> so that's the first Netflix. News that was from hypebeast.com that I got that from. Mm. Number two, um, Eddie Murphy's kind of been on a roll, right? Uh, Eddie Murphy did a, a movie on Netflix called Mr. Something where he was kind of a caretaker. Mm -hmm. It actually was a very good movie. I wish I knew the name of it. It's Mr. We're about to look it up because we have the technology for that <laughs> right here. Check out this tablet, man. I love this. It's Mr. Shit. Something, and it was very good, but. He also has, currently has out Dolomite is the name. Right. So I've heard uh, a lot of good reviews on that one. Um, but they just announced Beverly Hills Cop 4. And? Is coming to Netflix. What? What? Um, and they're not sure if Judge Reinhold, because I think most of, the, most of the persons involved are probably passed away by now. Right. But they're saying they're not sure if Judge Reinhold's going to be in it. But Beverly Hills Cop 4, I don't know how, how I feel about that, but I do feel better about it going to Netflix. Netflix has had a lot of good programming. Um, 
I think we may have touched on some of the Stephen King stuff going on, like in the tall grass, because I just saw that. Mm -hmm. Super duper weird. Uh, but there's like a, a bunch of Stephen King coming out. That's been some of it's been on Netflix, some of it's been on a big screen. You know, with obviously with it. However, they also said in conjunction with Eddie Murphy in Netflix, but they said there's an Eddie Murphy train going on. It's coming to America too. Right. Has been official, and they're giving it a date. Coming to America 2 is coming to Netflix. Just to Netflix? Netflix. December 18, 2020. Right. That's breaking. Yeah. Because I've been looking for coming to America 2 for over 20 years-ish. I, I feel like... Uh, Lots of the same people are coming I, back. Yeah, I feel like everybody's been looking for a coming, in, a coming to America 2. Here is what I wanted to say as it corresponds to no. uh, as it corresponds to what you're talking about. Yeah. Because I feel like the direction that you're heading with this is Netflix needs an out. Uh, they need to start doing big budget films. Yep. The streaming services have the the war has now become real. Yep. And what I wanted to talk about, I want to talk about Disney Plus, obviously launching on Tuesday. Yep. Uh, and so as it corresponds with what you're talking about, I don't know if Netflix feels desperate or if they just feel like they need to step up their game to the next level. Did you see how many people subscribe to Disney Plus? 12 million on Tuesday, and that is not everybody that pre-ordered it. Alone. That is 12 million people, including myself, yep. that subscribed on Tuesday once it launched. I read they were up to 30 million subscribers. I, I don't doubt that one I read bit. they're up to 30 uh, Quite already. honestly, I looked for the Disney Plus numbers before the launch, mm -hmm. and none of the Disney websites had it. Because mm -hmm. here, here was my argument, was if you can tell me that Avengers Endgame made... 500 million pre-sale mm -hmm. in, in pre-sale tickets before the movie was ever launched yep. or released and then you tell me uh, in addition to that 500 million that they made in pre-sale tickets another 250 million or another 350 million was made opening weekend in addition to pre-sale tickets then why could I not find a website that told me <laughs> that honestly I, like I wonder if uh, Disney was keeping it under wraps totally to keep it from you other streaming services like like disney's like like this yeah monday they're doing this <laughs> tuesday this is what it looks like you well, know what i mean you gotta realize also with all these companies that are streaming now um disney hulu and yeah. one other one is no disney hulu and somebody else espn plus oh okay. they're saying you can buy them as a package right. so when somebody listed today online they said Disney, Hulu, Netflix, HBO, and a bunch of other services were like 90 bucks. Right. But um, the problem is, if you're paying it, you're, you're damn near paying like to get regular cable. Right. So right. I was going away from cable and started streaming. Like, <clears throat> I mean, I got a broken fire stick now, and I get a bunch of other stuff. However, you still got to go through. I, I pay for the service I have. Right. That that's on there. Although there are some free ones, but the free ones aren't as good. There is a Disney Plus on there. Right. I didn't check it out. I didn't download it yet. I was going to ask Chris Darnell to help me with that. But um, you know, is there a way to package them together so they're not as expensive as separated out? I feel like eventually there will be. So there's got to be some honestly, partnerships. Honestly, if you, I mean, what do you really have wrapped up in it? Because for seven dollars a month, you can have Disney Plus, mm -hmm. which we decided to just get the year for seventy bucks, which breaks down to five dollars and eighty three cents a month, mm -hmm. right? So let's take that five eighty three, and that let's add that to the the five ninety nine that we're paying for Hulu with commercials. Mm -hmm. That's ten dollars wrapped up. And then let's add the twelve dollars for Netflix, which is probably the most expensive. Uh, streaming service that but we pay for. Do they not have the best programming so far? Who? Netflix. Yes. And I, say, okay, okay. I don't want to say so far. No, 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 no. Let me, let me take that back. No, they don't. Really? Okay. So Netflix has adult shows. Netflix has shows that we as an adult want to see. 
For example, uh, the Umbrella Academy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've watched that yet or not. Amazing series. I don't have Netflix. You don't have Netflix? But you got a broken fire stick. Mm -hmm. Umbrella Academy. Dude, (laughs) let me tell you. It's a little it's a little slow to start, but the last thirty minutes of the last episode of the first season was probably the most epic television that I've seen, including like Marvel movies outside of anything that had to do with Thanos mm-hmm. for the last five years. It really had me on the edge of my seat, like it all makes sense now. It all comes full circle. I don't know why this dummy was doing this and why this was this and what happened here, but hot damn, this is television. Well, that's how I felt about the boys on Amazon. I've seen that. I've seen that through its entirety now. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. So when they come back for season two, scene, I was like, I was like, oh, this dude is an asshole. (laughs) So so when that comes back for season two shortly, I'm I'm so looking forward, and I did figure out that I can watch that on my fire stick. Right. So. One, please go watch the Umbrella Academy. It's it's not your typical superhero kind of. It's really weird, and I think you would get into mm-hmm. it. But if anything, at least stick it out through the series so you can see the last episode. It's got Ellen Page in it, mm-hmm. dude. She's like no other. Like she she was good in Inception. She was good in Juno. That's not the one. She's she's in some kind of superhero. Spinoff with uh, Rain Wilson. I saw this movie with her and Rain Wilson. The guy that plays Dwayne Schrute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in it as a superhero. He gets tired of people's shit. So he decides, I'm going to dress up as a, as a superhero and go, go beat some ass. And she's like, dude, I want to go beat some ass with you. And it just goes far left oh. after that. Because his, cause his wife left him. It was... Apparently he didn't see it, so... No, no, no. The, the Umbrella Academy is actually... Uh, is very very cultured i'll say that so and and they've already signed up to do the second season they are they've already started filming it which was amazing but back to my original point right before we got stuck on the umbrella the umbrella (laughs) academy uh netflix is great for grown-up programming okay disney plus just disney plus alone has stated that you will not find any rated r movies on their streaming service which makes sense Right, it's Disney. I mean, the only movie that you would look for now on there would be Deadpool, which maybe you can get the PG thirteen version, but you're not going to get the rated R. Is he Disney? He is because he belongs to Fox. Oh shit! So with the Disney Fox merger, which brings me to my second point, right? So as I said before, if you're watching a beer review, we got Disney Plus on Tuesday. We, uh, of course, opened it up. We start looking at everything. They make it real easy to use. It's Pixar, Marvel, I love Pixar. classic, like, so your classic animated movies, uh, Fox, so like your Simpsons, really? which I found out, oddly enough, they air every, they will offer every single episode of The Simpsons, with the exception of the episode that included Michael Jackson. Wow. Yes. That's a lot. Right. So... Uh, for grown-up programming, you want to watch. You want to go to Netflix. You want to watch the, the uh, uh, Love, Death, and Robots, the Black Mirrors, the grown the the movies, the Netflix original movies, uh, series like The Umbrella Academy. Uh, for nostalgia, you go to Disney. Because as I was looking through, you have to remember Disney bought Fox, so X Men the animated series. Every season, every episode of X-Men the Animated Series is on Disney. Hmm. A gem that I found, and I actually had to do a little bit of research on it, was the Silver Surfer had an animated series that started in 1998. Nope, didn't know that. Yeah, 